everyone, Coach Micah here, and welcome to another driveway workout. Um, in my experience playing on the WTA Tour for 10 years, um, the toughest thing was coming back after a while that we couldn't play. Um, I suffered from a lot of injuries, unfortunately, and I'm kind of likening our situation to that right now, that we didn't have the chance to get on court for two months or even three months, and we kind of have to get back into the swing of things. So today's workout focuses on cardio. We're not doing any core workout today. It's all gonna be cardio. So again, we're doing four rounds of three sets with two minutes each. And forcing ourselves here to really get back into the tennis specific uh, movements. So even if you can run for an hour or hour and a half, tennis is so different in that we start and stop, start and stop constantly. So what we'll do is we have 90 seconds of action and then we have 30 second break. So it's very tennis specific that we're trying to build up our endurance again. So let's get going with just our regular warm up and then it's gonna be all cardio. So start running in place. Kind of just like a boxer shuffle, whichever you wanna do. As usual, as we're doing our driveway workout, there's people walking by and they're wondering what we're doing. Well, guess what? I'm going to get back in shape. Okay, so let's start lifting our knees a little higher. Okay, so we're getting up hopefully to almost 90 degrees. And then we're going to butt kicks. Just getting warmed up. All right, then we're doing single leg raises. And as usual, just getting warmed up. All right, just some jumping jacks. Jane's, whatever you want to call them. And then we're crossing our legs on each jump. So a little bit of coordination too. All right, a little more running in place. skips. And all should definitely be 90 degrees. All right, stay in motion. Arm circles. And backwards. and then we're going one forward and one backwards. And switch direction. Stay in motion. Just getting our heart rate up, getting ready for our workout. Do it one more time the other way. And switch one more time, last time here. forward and back. Just imagine you have the baseline here, or any kind of line, you just jump it over, keep your feet together. All right, and then just nice and easy, as usual, some ground strokes. You can vary your technique, slice, more heavy topspin, drive, whatever it is.
right, and just take a couple of swings overheads because we will be using those today. Here are our first three moves. So, if you don't have regular targets or you know cones or something, you can use almost anything. Even a rolled-up pair of socks can be okay. So, what I'm using it, uh, they're little ice aggregates or whatever you call them. So, what you're going to do is you put them a little more than shoulder width apart. And our first move is figure eight. Right, so what we're trying to do is go quick behind, quick through our markers. We're trying not to let ourselves get carried too far away from the markers. So tight little curves around the markers. So that's first 30. And then grab another one. This was lateral. Now we're going up and back. Left, figure eight. Okay, that, that's our uh, second move. And our third, is just wide switch jumps. All right, so we're working on a lower base and a low center of gravity for stability. So grab a swig of water because we're about to get ready. And as usual, I am doing all the exercises with you. There's a lot of stuff out there where some super fit person or apparently super fit person is showing you what to do, but they're not suffering through with you. I will. So let's get ready. Lateral figure eight. Ready, set, and go. 30 seconds. All right, and you're ready. Is in your ready, uh, your racket is in your ready position. Don't want to let it hang here. You have it up here. Right, I'd like to have it in a continental grip because that way I can easily switch it to my Eastern grip on the forehand and the Eastern backhand grip. All right, stay close to your markers. And we're switching up and back. Up and back, up and back. Yep, lift your feet. Don't do it like me, a shovel around. Shove your targets out of the way. Get around them. Small little steps. Ooh, I'm feeling that. All right, wide switch step. shoulder width. Stay with me. We're almost done. Good. All right. First set is in the books. Rearrange your cones or your markers. If you stepped on them like I did. And stay moving. And we have nine Look at your feet if you can. That's difficult. All right, and we're going up and back again. Making it a little tougher. All right, this is when you hear your shoes squeak. So you have those nice little, small, aggressive steps.
Alright, wide switch steps. 30 seconds. seconds. One last time. We got this. All right, athletes, here we go. Three, two, one, go. And I'm switching my racket hand. minute break. You guys have a minute break. I'll show you what we do on the next round. So we got 30 seconds. You're kind of lucky. I forgot the last one of the switch steps. We'll add that on at the very, very end. So don't let me forget. All right. Now the next set, we're doing short forehands. So what we want to do is we initiate all our movements with a split step. And then watch here how I'm turning. My left foot comes forward and then I do the slide step. Let me actually hold the time here for a second to show you a little bit better. So I'm turning always initiating movements with my upper body and my racket turn here. So I'm moving forward, short fall. I'm coming back and again, forward. Here, split step and forward. And we're doing the same on the back inside. Again, split and I turn. I haven't moved yet other than really bringing my upper body in position here and then slide. Okay, those are balls that are inside the baseline, you can move forward into the baseline, and the objective is to take time away from your opponent. Right? You're gonna be really balanced on those balls, use your legs to manipulate for height, uh, meaning that you're not leaning over the ball, you're getting into the ball. And then the third move is apparently an exercise that Stephanie Graf preferred. We're moving around a marker and hitting an inside ball. Right, so I'm making room here on my forehand side. I'm making room here on my backhand side. So I'll do all three moves from the back. So again, forehand. And I'm coming back. Backhand from the back. And then the last one is Stephanie Graf's favorite drill, apparently. So getting around to hit. So forth. All right, you have 10 seconds, 15 seconds more rest. Stay in motion. All right, 
right, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. As you're coming back, split, left, step, turn, and move forward. Split, forward. All right, you don't have to hit those balls harder. By taking one or two steps inside the court, you're taking time away from your opponent. And she's not going to like that. Trust you me. All right, here we go. Three seconds, short back hands. Ready, go. That was one of the major differences of my generation and then the next coming up. I was taught to let balls drop to get more time. The next generation was taught to move up. And boy, did I struggle. Or should I say girl, did I struggle. All right, here we go. And Stephanie Graf drill. Get around, make room. Imagine you have your ball right here. Contact point in front, follow through, then you recover. Two. 12 seconds. Grab some water. And get ready. Attack short forehands. Use your legs. Alright, don't get up there. Do this, recover. No, no, no. Let's commit. Body weight is on your front foot as you're hitting this ball. And short back hands. If you're coming back, make sure you split step, turn, then you move. You don't want to move up and then be forced to hit a very, very compromised ball because you're getting jammed. your toes here and Stephanie grab yes you know where Steffi grab but she wants to be called Stephanie grab and in my mind that woman can do whatever she wants because she earned it come on Work on your grip changes and rest. 30 seconds. All right, if you're struggling with the movement, do them a little slower, but do them well. All right, we don't want to have high knee anything. So we have five seconds for our last set in the second round. Get ready. And go. Split step, turn, and move. Who's my neighbor? All right, here we go. Come on, give me three more. Short ball, don't let it drop. We want to take our balls between the hip and shoulder. balls between hip and shoulder. So we're taking balls on the rise or on the apex, on the top of its bounce. If we let balls rise, we gotta let them rise. 
You don't want to short hop a ball. That's not what we're talking about. Here we go. And again. Light step and grab twice in doubles. And that woman is just an incredible athlete. There's not a ball that she didn't try to get. However hopeless it looked. And guess what? She got a lot of them. All right, here we go. Breathe. All right. your breath and then we're working we're gonna work on overheads now um, in a very specific pattern of footwork when you're playing overheads so the first one is just a functional drill to get used to the crossover okay so what that is so I'll show you from the side and the front and the back split and you see that my outside leg the leg that is closer to you will cross over in front and then I shuffle. If I do it from the front here, this is a crossover. Here's my crossover. Always the outside leg comes in front and then we shuffle. Now the reason why we're using crossover so much is because you can grab a lot, a lot more room with a crossover very explosively rather than a shuffle. And especially when we change direction aggressively crossovers. So this is our first move for 30 seconds. The second one, let me show it from the back, sorry about that. Here, split, crossover. So this is the crossover. Now we're hitting overheads. So make sure that you don't have a lamp or anything hanging. I'll do it without my racket. This is not so much for the hit, it's more for the footwork pattern. So you're in your ready position. If you're a right-handed person, you bring the right side of your body back, and then you give me crossover, one shuffle, and hit. So let me go up here. So turn, cross over, hit. Come forward, split. Turn, cross over, and split. We don't want to move back to an overhead this way. If you're unfamiliar, with the crossover and you're having issues coordinating that, no problem, but let's work on the turn. So again, I'm a right-handed person, the right side goes back, and if I then shuffle, that is fine too. The longer you do these workouts, the more confident you get with the uh, footwork patterns. Of course, if you're a left-handed person, I'll do it from the back. I'm going back here, crossover, and then I'm in a ready good uh, hitting position. So the second move is, you guessed it, crossover, hit, come forward, split, turn, crossover. The third movement is, I'm getting ready, I'm hitting a good crossover, overhead, I'm coming forward, and I hit a volley. Okay, I'm cleaning up the trash, is what we call it at Vanderbilt, where I used to um, coach in college. So again, turn, really punishing that ball, come forward, forehand volley. You come back and the next one will be a backhand volley. Okay, those are our three moves for the next round. Get ready. So the first is crossover side to side the entirety of my driveway. So again, get ready. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Crossover, Again, I got my ready in my racket in my ready position. My bracket in my ready position. There we go. Alright, stay low. Alright, here we go. Five seconds. And I'm doing this first set from the back. So split step, turn, cross over. Hit, come forward, split. 
You're in it. You can't come forward. seconds break. Grab some water. And again, crossovers. Crossing over splits that cross. choked up racket if I have a low ceiling. It's all about the footwork. Come on guys, stay on your toes. Alright, arms up. Bam. Alright, now we're adding a volley. Split, turn, cross over, hit. Split, volley. Crossovers here. Come on, I'm right here with you. All right, overhead, split, going back. Turn. And again, if you're just working with the shuffle, that's fine too. Right? Turn, shuffle, shuffle, get under it. And of course, you're also using shuffles to move forward. Right? If the ball's a little shorter. So, five seconds. Here we go. Next, we're adding a volley.
side, we're almost done. So here are the next three moves. We're combining approach shots or shorter balls with the volleys. So forehand, come forward, split step. And a forehand volley. So forehand, split step, volley. That's our first move. So again, forehand, come forward, volley. And I would give myself a little bit more room if I had more room, but since we don't, we work on the absolute basics, right? Our slide step, split step, grip change, turn and step. And we're doing the next 30 seconds, backhand and backhand volley. Now, if you're working on slice, if you have a slice, use your slice to come in. Couple of benefits of that. You are already in your continental grip. So you reduce the errors of, ooh, what's my grip? The other thing is the slice is maybe a little slower. That gives you more time to close in. And the third is, if you have a nice sticky slice, that ball sits down right here and they have to lift it up to you, right? So a slice is a wonderful approach shot. And then the third one is a letter X. So we're having a short forehand, back in volley. Then we're going backhand, forehand volley. Those are our three moves. Yep, right here with you. Again, give yourself credit for having made the time today to work out and to get better. If you didn't feel like working out and you're still with me, you rock. Okay, here we go. Ready, short forehand, split forehand volley. So I'm turning, I use my slide step, split grip change, volley. that you can work on without ever having to hit a ball. Same on the back end. I'm using my slice, split, turn. If you have a two-hander, of course you do two-hander. I have a one-hander, so yep, you also have to roll approach shots. Split, come forward. Always work on your balance. Keep going, keep going. Now, letter X. Short forehand, backhand volley. Backhand, forehand volley. And forehand. This is brutal, you guys. Come on, but we pull through. breathe. Do two more sets. And then we have to make up the wide switch steps from the very beginning that I cheated you out of. All right, here we go. Short forehand, back in volley. Come back, back in, back in volley. Ooh, for a second I forgot, we're only on forehand. So it's only forehand, we're transitioning in, and we're getting a forehand volley. Make sure you split step, split, and go. Now we're going to back in. Yes, the coach forgets stuff. Split, turn.
Letter X. Short approach here. Back in volley. Right, use your legs on the volley to generate power. athletes last round last set of 90 seconds full energy full concentration this is the time when we want to start coasting nah -uh. we're going hard till the last second okay so get ready short forehands forehand volley let's go doing it wrong again. I'm not focusing. That's what I'm talking about. Right? You get tired, you're making mistakes, and even if it's just a mental error. So, trying to focus, four hands only. Now we're switching to backhands. Come on, we got this. seconds wide split steps shuffle steps because that cheated you out of those so we're just adding them on at the end we're not taking any shortcuts stay with me here for another 15 seconds walking. All right, try to catch your breath. All right, so this was very, very specific tennis cardio. All right, 90 seconds, full go. Yes, that's way longer than most every rallies that you play. And yes, usually you have 20 seconds, 25 seconds between points, but this is the ratio that I used to train in. 90 seconds, full go, 30 seconds break. So, serve me well, as well as, of course, um, cooling down. All right, super ideal would be you just go in like five minutes, just what in German you would call pedal job. Right? Just totally relaxed. And then do your stretch. Because that starts helping you get the waste products out of your cells. And you build those up, trust me. All right, we're doing a lunge forward. Knee does not come onto the ground. And I'm leaning into my hip. Should feel a good stretch. Also trying to give you variations of stretches just in case you prefer some or you can't do some. I have a couple of things that I can't do anymore because of previous injuries. So 
So just a variation and you have a menu of choices here. All right, same again, I'm sinking lower. All right, going down, thinking yoga, it's called a crow. I'm not a thousand percent sure. I'm not necessarily the biggest yoga person. Should be, because it's fantastic. I'm just leaning forward on my elbows here, opening my hips. Give me a good stretch. And coming back up. An oldie but goodie. Just leaning forward, hanging over my hips. Trying to reach the ground. Again, you never want to force a stretch to where it's painful. All right, let's do another quad stretch. And I do find it easier if I balance with my other hand up in the air, trying to stay straight. switch. And let's just because it's the nicest and easiest. And for me, that was always the last one in practices. And I knew that signaled that I had done well, just rotating your trunk here a little bit. All right, continue to drink. Make sure you've taken a lot of water. And then I'm hoping you enjoyed our workout. Please do subscribe at the very bottom of your screen. And also check that little bell on the top right because that means that you're notified uh, when I'm posting more content. So I'll see you for the next workout right here in my driveway. See you.